Welcome back to BRB Gaming. We're doing a special Christmas episode. Stubbs and I got our RP2 Pluses in, and we're crazy excited for them. Yeah, we are. We got Indigo, and we got 16-Bit. Yep. Pal, and all that good stuff. I am so stoked on just the state of handhelds right now. Things are pretty good, and uh, the performance on this device is pretty damn impressive, too. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And just, you know, just beyond that, I got the 5.52 five in. I got the Miu Mini in. Hell yeah. X18S in. I want that, I want that nasty about, Miu Mini. I want it so bad. You, I, want, the, I want, you want the DMG? Like, I do. I want that filth. Coloring. You know, that thing's gross. <laughs> I love it. Dude, this thing. I also have my 5.52 five in, bad. but... I also got, you got do, 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 you? a red GPD XD that I bought on eBay. This thing is in perfect shape. You have been badgering oh. me for five months yes. now to get one. Uh, and I so have. I finally did. I'm going to take this with me while we're in Orlando next week and while we're chilling out. Yeah, buddy. See how it feels. Yeah, man. So. Uh, I am so happy that you picked up an XD finally. You're on the clamshell train. And it's not just a clamshell, it's like, it's like just a great quality handheld. So, but we're not here to talk about any of those handhelds today. Today, we are doing no. something new. We're doing our first deep dive, I would say initial review, because RP2 Plus, we've only had in our hands less than a couple week. Couple days, yeah. Couple of days. I think I'm day four into my RP2 Plus binge, as you put it. And <laughs> yeah. It has been, admit it, it has been a binge. All right. Admit it's it. It's been a binge. You, it's been a binge. I've been hard. <laughs> went hard. All right. You've had it for four days, I think. Would you now? say? Would you say I went hard on it? You had it on I Monday, mean, right? Yeah. Would you would you say? Would Sunday. you say? Sunday. 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 Okay. So five days. You've had it for five days and five you days, spent yeah. five days on it. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, not like I've been you know, just neurotically testing every game known to man on GameCube and putting it into a spreadsheet that I said I would not do to multiple people. And I'm like, someone needs to make a spreadsheet. Somebody needs to make a spreadsheet. And then finally, it's like, that someone okay, I'm going to start the spreadsheet. I'm I'm just going to start it. I need the community. I need everybody with an RP2+. Plus. Please go into the spreadsheet. Everybody shut up. Shut up. Tinyurl.com forward slash RP2 plus game settings. Um. I'll put we'll a link in the, the description eventually. We'll add it to the wiki. Just hop in there if you don't mind. Add your notes for GameCube, PS2, PSP, Saturn, all the systems, 3DS, Wii, and uh, we want to we want to know what games run, what games don't. So we got a nice little list started now. So I'll, I'll go ahead and get started on my end. How about that? So we yeah. already have a root solution for it. Okay. We already have it rooted. Yeah. Turtle and I got it rooted. So yeah. we are we have not released that yet because nobody's really asked for it, number one. But number two, it does yep. require flashing to your recovery partition on the device, which means that yeah. if something goes wrong, you won't have recovery and you have to kind of start all over. It's a pain in the butt and a little dangerous right now. So we're going to come up with a better solution. Right. But uh, we have twerp booting on it which Team Win Recovery Project, it's a custom recovery, which will allow us to install lineage and stuff like that way easier. Once yeah. we get to Turtle that Turtle was point. in my DMs today, so he, yeah. I got oh, yeah, yeah. running. You, you guys were working on it while I was asleep earlier. So I filled in. Cool. I was cosplaying as Thor today with lineage <laughs> development, the best that I could. You know, Cathonix is in here because she does Bash, so she's like, she's like, mm -hmm. no, 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 that's not, that's not IS, that's LS, as right, in LS. like list... Right, you know, you're listing the contents of the SD card, and I'm like, oh, I thought he's saying is, yeah. Hmm. And then, anyways, CP, yeah, CP forward slash <laughs> TMP forward slash recovery log to SD card to it, it's a whole thing. That's what Cathonix to, said. Cathonix like Turtle, why didn't you use CP? And he's like, because I thought of using CAT first, C A T. And I'm like, yeah, no. And they're giggling and laughing. See, I'm like, you guys are in I some always, joke. I'm every like, time he every time he types it. CAT to me, I use CP. So. <laughs> really? I just think about just cats meowing and I'm like, do I give you some tuna? Like what, what are we doing here? But so uh, yeah, things are going well. We're moving right along. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
here in the near future, we will have something for some for people to maybe test out in RH. Yeah. Anybody, anybody who may be interested in being a beta tester, let me know. Feel free to tag me, and I'll add you to a list. And when things are ready, and we're going to open up a, a beta testing channel so people can have access to the firmware, I will let you know. You're going to do command ls to make a list. I'm learning, dude. I'm learning this language slowly. I'll be a developer one day. Una dia. So, yeah, but yeah, we've been having fun with it. We're working on it. Uh, Retroid gave us the flashing package in case anything bad happens to anybody's Ooh. device or they get a bad OTA or or their power, they lose power or something, whatever. If, if your yeah. device gets screwed up, we now have a flashing package available for the RP2 Plus uh, for you to recover your device. And it's very simple. I, I put the guide in to the archive. Yep. So just check out the firmware channel and Retro Handheld's Discord, and you can download it right away. It's very easy. It's a very small package. Well, perfect. And I'm glad people have that too. I almost thought I bricked it at multiple points today, but <laughs> sort of walked yeah. me out of the scariness. So let's go back to basics here. So some people listening might not know much about what the RP2 Plus is. So we're going to kind of go into a standard review format. We're going to cover an intro, tech specs, kind of like an impressions, size and weight, ergo, screen, uh, any OTA updates, OS stuff, launcher mm -hmm. stuff, emulation performance, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, so starting things out with the tech specs. So the RP2 Plus is made by Morechip. Yes. released this year. We got that landscape More, form factor. Morechip is the, is the parent company for Retroid, just so people know that. For Retroid. Comes in multiple colors. We got... Both of these colors were in the RP2 generation, but yep. now what you'll see is there's some little changes we'll talk about in a few minutes, but going over more of the specs, it comes out of the box with Android 9, yeah. which is a nice night and day difference from the RP2, which launched with Android 6. To this day, if you buy an RP2, it comes with Android 6. You can right. load on 8. Then you have to update it. But you got to update it. So coming with 9 out of the box, I got to say that's a great... Uh, entry, I was able to get up and running just with that OS and do most of what I wanted to do. Now, this is going to play pretty much everything up into up until GameCube PS2, which is nuts Some to GameCube say. GameCube PS2. Some uh, GameCube PS2. We'll talk more about that in a few. And the the reason the reason why it's able to do that is the upgraded CPU and GPU. All right, so we went from which the are? Retroid Pocket 2. It's a Tiger T, Unisoc Tiger T610. Uh, 310. We went for, 310, I'm sorry, 310. We went from uh, not being able to play PSP really on the RP2, yep. all right, to now PSP is, ex PSP is extremely playable. It's yep. uh, the CPU and GPU upgrade as well as a nice RAM upgrade. We went from one gigabyte Ooh. To two gigabytes, which makes a huge difference on these devices. A big difference. And you got the quad core Cortex. You got the A75, right. the A55. The right. That's right. And it has a variable uh, CPU. The governor on it is mm -hmm. going from 1.8 gigahertz and it fluctuates up to two gigahertz. And you can really feel that when you're playing the games. Games on higher end systems start out kind of stuttery, give it about 30 seconds, that CPU governor will uh, mm -hmm. fluctuate it right up to two gigahertz where it needs and you're gonna get that extra and, power. And for people who don't know why they do that, why they built it that way, uh, these devices, if you if you run it at max CPU speed at all time, it's gonna kill your battery. So being yeah. able it being able to automatically throttle itself down and up is gonna save you a ton in battery life. So. If you're doing something light like uh, some 2D PlayStation or Super Nintendo, your battery life yep. is obviously going to be way longer than if you're crushing it with N64 or PSP. Exactly. But but the ability for it to ramp up and still play it at that high performance is awesome. It is super awesome. Um, <laughs> that, you know, that's something I was always raised with with my old GPD. And the XD and the XD Plus, they have the same system set up. So you can play NES all day long. If you want to play something harder, you're going to shorten your battery. But yeah, you can play those systems. Uh, now, the GPU side on this this guy, we do have that Power VR, uh, GE 8300, 800 megahertz. Now, that's going to open up some new options for us. 
Power VR sure. traditionally is kind of a pain in the ass to work with. It is. But can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> Usually that means we're having a tough time on Saturn, but we're going to get to this later in the review. Saturn actually runs extremely well on this chipset. And I have no idea why. No idea. It should not be this good. On the XD, it wasn't this good. With also with the Power VR and the XD Plus. But here we are. It has it has to be that, that standalone Yaba Sanchiro too, doesn't it? Yeah. It's gotta be Sanchiro too. There's yeah. some I don't know what version exactly is on there. I need to look it up. But it is running just flawlessly. As long as you're running in one X resolution, not adding on any shaders or anything, uh, it's gonna have a good time. Yeah. So beyond that, we got that same screen size as the RP2. We got that 3.5 inch, four by three aspect ratio. This time though, we got an IPS touch screen. Yeah. All right. Which is delightful. which is my biggest complaint with the RP2. I loved the RP2, but when I got it in my hands for the first time, I was like. Oh my God, doing Android without a touch screen is <laughs> crippling. Yeah. It's crippling. And I gritted my way through it. And I, I love the device despite that. But secretly, I'm like, as soon as something like this comes out with the touch screen, I am hopping straight to that ship. And they included, so, in, in the RP2, they included the mouse mode thing. And then later on, the, the, sure. the mouse slash touch mode thing. It just, it wasn't enough. It was good well, not, for what it was, right. but it wasn't enough. The t if you're going to do Android, you need a touchscreen. Linux, don't need the touchscreen. Even the like right. RG552, the touchscreen doesn't work on that in the Linux yeah. distro. But if with Android, because of the, the swipe controls <laughs> and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> oh my need gosh, it, I cannot explain how much time I wasted with the RP2 sitting well, there with the with the holding down a trying to swipe down from the I know top menu. I know yeah, it's just... infuriating I, I I still got by we all still got by yeah and for those of you who got the rp2 plus upgrade PCB kit and you did not buy a touchscreen you're mm -hmm. going to be still touchscreenless it's okay though because set up your device you know maybe plug in a mouse yeah plug in a keyboard and a mouse that'll make device setup easy once it's set up dude set a launcher as to to launch on boost uh, on uh, on boot up so something like reset collection right. something like dig set up a really good front end as your the, launcher yeah, the retro mega theme yeah retro mega theme for pegasus boot right into it you're never going to have to worry about having a touch screen if you set that up right. um even retroid's built in launcher you can launch to that by default as well. We'll talk more about it. It has a little ways to go. Um, just get yourself set up, and it's fine to go touch screenless. But I got to say, if you do have a touch screen on this, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, nice. it's just night and day difference. I'm loving it, and uh, it's I can't a, go back. It's a monster it. upgrade. I, we, it's very monster difficult upgrade. to explain until, unless you have an RP2. And then go yeah. to the two plus. You're it's, moving, a, it's a completely yeah, different device. Going through the switch in yeah. the same package, you know. It's just, I mean, just look at this. Like, I never, I'm still kicking myself for this and pinching myself. Like, it's just you can swipe <laughs> yeah, from the nice. bottom now, and you have these Android controls. Yep. And you have it's not only that, but the, the touch screen has kind of forced feedback, so you get some haptics. I turn that off. I always turn that really. Off. Oh yeah, I like it. It feels it feels kind of good. It lets you know when you're you know typing something or uh, not only that, but you got the rumble motors in this in this unit, which you didn't have in the RP two unless you custom soldered on one. Right. So there's the touch screen, and as far as the did yours come in the same the same box, like the same shape box yeah. and size as the yeah. original RP two? Yeah. Yeah. It did. A little bit yeah, of packaging as far as logos. Yeah. Yep. I appreciated it. Uh, there's no SD card with this one no, because it has that 32 gigs. Card. It has that 32 gigs of internal storage. Right. And MTP so mode. Just, if you if you power up your device and you have it plugged in already, as soon yeah. as you you swipe the screen to unlock it, it will ask you directly: Do you want it to just charge, or do you want file transfer? Which is awesome because that way you can quickly put it into MTP so you can transfer your ROMs over. 
It was a very nice little little software touch. I found that flawless too. You plug a cable in, it asks you, do you want to transfer files or do you want to charge? Boom, you're transferring files and just super easy. So I right. appreciated that. Uh, it has that 640 by 480 resolution, like I said, that 228 PPI. The touchscreen is tempered glass and that's a really nice upgrade. It feels nice. It feels good. You put on your screen protector as soon as you get it. It's just... Touch isn't affected by the screen protector, as far as I can tell. It runs really well. Uh, also, I would say having the touch screen, meaning you can do screen mapping software now. So it has this new screen mapping mm -hmm. software. You pull in, you swipe in from the right if you want it. You can you can disable that if you want, if you don't want to see a little strip along the right side of your screen. And that lets you have further buttons. You can make yourself like maybe an L3, R3 situation. You can set up Android games. You can access game settings for a lot of these standalones without having to use hotkeys like you yeah. would normally have to do. So just these little these little touches make a huge difference in having that touch screen. For battery, you got the same situation as before with that 4000 milliamp hour and it just seems to go further now. I don't know why, but I'm finding my battery to last longer than in my RP2 because of the architecture, because of the manufacturing process. It's a it's much smaller transistors, smaller. So it's more power efficient. I'm noticing that. I'm I've got to say right off the bat, I know for I know this. I can leave my RP2 plus on and playing pretty much all day long without having to charge. Uh I've gone two days without charging it here no and there. Problem. You know, no problem. And I'm like, this is whoa, this is bizarre. What reality have we stepped into? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they have. Uh, they there's have no a fan. Good, good deep sleep mode on it, you know. So when they you do. when you aren't playing it and you go to sleep, I, you wake up. It's like one or two percent drained instead of. I noticed that ten or twenty. Like before. and I did a sleep. I did a deep sleep test. Uh, I put it in deep sleep for six hours, and I lost three percent battery in six hours. Right. Not freaking bad. Not shabby. Not, not shabby. shabby at all. I'm so used to shutting devices down. Yeah. This is the first time I'm now leaning on the, on putting a device to sleep. Uh, cold boot time, I'll have you know, is 49 seconds exactly. We will improve that with lineage, I would imagine. We've done it before. Not just that, but when, we, when we're doing the lineage stuff, we tend to yep. submit our patches to the original manufacturers so they can also improve the stock firmware as well. Yes. So a lot of the upgrades that we'll have for Lineage may eventually make their way into the stock ROM as well. Yep, over one of those OTA updates. So, yeah. Which are nice, by the way. We Yes, they are. So I'm hoping to get that sleep time or the uh, wake-up time down a little bit. Uh, hopefully in the 22nd, area we'll see right but like we were talking about it doesn't you don't need to boot it every time you can charge it and, yeah or put it to sleep and yeah just like your phone you don't restart your phone every time you get up in the morning you know uh right this is a, a bigger step toward that phone style refinement I think. that phone experience yeah mm -hmm. i'd have to agree man um waking up from sleep you're it takes about maybe a quarter of a second to wake up it is. It's just yeah, good. It's fast. It's just good. It's like a phone. It's like a phone. Uh, oh man, other tech specs. Yeah, there you go. Thor's got that. Indigo. Oh, look at that. Boom it's, on. It's got my no, little my little UR no mod in it as no. well, so I can pull logs for the custom firmware development. It is good to go. D pad. We got that. Uh, we got that cross style. Mm -hmm. It has lower placement. It's on conductive rubber. You'll notice this time it's a little bit raised up from the RP2, which I better pull up my RP2 for a direct comparison. Mm -hmm. So we got a little bit of raised up there, which looks good. Uh, thumbsticks and slider is going to look similar. So the slider is still that same style, but now it's actually an analog input. So you're seeing some benefits there. Uh, left thumbstick, still the same. Mm 
Okay. And uh, face buttons as well are raised up. So, yeah. We were noticing now that the face buttons have also that conductive rubber and there's improved membranes. It's just way better. It is. And it, the buttons themselves are raised up more and that the RP2s were very clicky feeling compared to these. Yeah. Very, very clicky. These are much softer. You can tell that they're membrane, but they're firm. It's nice. Yep. I would have to I agree. Like, I feel like you can you can really easy get your Hadoukens off, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's much easier. And charging is still USB-C. Has mm -hmm. that 32 gigabyte EMMC inside with your external micro SD option. Which we should say, it is USB-C, yeah. but it's not... It's not the fast charging USB C stuff. It's still the classic USB two hub with the C connector. So don't with the expect, C connector. Yeah. Don't expect we're not getting in three minutes or whatever. Yeah, we're not getting fast charging. And that's that's maybe, maybe a little a little chink. Maybe a little later. RP3. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um <clears throat> we have Bluetooth four this time around. So that's an upgrade from before as far as I know. Well, you were having a little trouble with that. Oh yeah, we'll uh, we'll get to that after the uh, after the tech specs round. I'm trying to rapid fire. There are so many specs on this thing. Uh, Wi-Fi five now. We got wireless AC five gigahertz, which is a game changer as far as game streaming. I was playing Xbox Game Pass on it, which I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Steam, uh, Moonlight, these were not options before with that held back by that 2.4 gigahertz. It's just nuts. Stadia? Like, come on. Uh, we got micro HDMI, which that's the one thing I regret to say I've not been able to have time to test. Thor, have you tested the HDMI yet? I have not. Well, we'll have to come back in the follow-up at some point. Um, 3.5-inch headphone. Whew, I'm going off Time is Art spreadsheet right now to make sure I cover all the tech specs. And Time is Art gives you all the details. If you want to know every little thing about every device known to man in the retro handheld world, he's got you covered. So this is great. I'm going to skip over a lot of the rest of this right now. But needless to say, it is just head and shoulders upgrade from the RP2. Uh, coming in at $65 for that PCB, $99 for the fully assembled kit, plus shipping, which by the way, I paid for four picks shipping and for whatever reason they upgraded to DHL and it showed up way faster than I thought it would. So no explanation there. That's really cool. Uh, do, we do have to say as far as transparency goes, we did get one of these units. My Indigo was a free unit for the podcast to review. Mm -hmm. It is an unbiased review. I love the device. I also have some gripes with the device. So we do have to say that. Okay. I think we've kind of already gone over impressions, initial impressions. So I'm just going to skip that, man. Size and weight, though. Does it feel any heavier to you than the RP2? No. I'm feeling it. All right. Because it's just a motherboard upgrade. Yeah, it feels pretty much exactly the same. They didn't really I mean, say, they didn't yeah. change anything. <laughs> yeah. The buttons are all the same shape. I mean, it's because I have a pre-assembled unit. Uh, it's it's the same thing as the RP2, same feel. But yeah, with the exception of the conductive rubber. So the membranes are better. They're not as clicky, but they're uh, they feel firmer. Does that make sense? They do. Yeah, they feel more defined. I'm noticing playing on my RP2. I didn't notice this before, but the D-pad just, it's almost like work. It's almost effort to push on this D-pad. Same thing with the face buttons. They're just a little too recessed into the device. Yeah, they for the RP2 Plus, they definitely made the face buttons taller. And I think that they yeah. made the D-pad taller. Yeah, they definitely made the D-pad taller the, as well. Yeah, the D-pad's taller as well. Um, L1, R1 are the same. 
L2, R2, I believe, are also the same. They could have, they could have, in my opinion, made the home start and select buttons a little taller as well, just a touch. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. They're a little close in, especially especially start and select, where we actually use them in games. It's just right. kind of still kind of a chore to push start and select, which is fine. But uh, also RP3, I'm hoping they do a little better. And while we're on the subject, having that joystick on the left being up above still, I really wish we could have swapped, had D-pad up above, because you know that most of the games, the best playable games on this device, could benefit from having that D-pad above. So RP3, I'm hearing that maybe we're swapping things. It's possible. I I know that there's not a huge controversy, but people love love to discuss the correct layout. Uh, I think that this is fine for what it is for the 2+. plus. I do think that for the 3, it should probably be switched, though especially if they're going to include L3 and R3 click in the sticks for the RP3. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Well, okay. So ergonomics, how do ergonomics feel to you as far as these buttons go? Any difference? You know, I've always liked the RP2. <laughs> I <Yeah>. always have. <laughs> it was you know, one of my first, first retro handhelds. Well, the thing that sold me on it were, are the stacked shoulder buttons. All the yeah. Ambernick products have the reach arounds. And then, like, for instance, on the 552, uh, I, even with my monster hands, it's quite a reach to get to L2R2 on it. You know, it's quite a reach. Yeah. This is, I feel it's correct. I understand that, yeah, like, Ambernick making, huh? making flat back to devices. I get it. But this sure. right here, if they were to take this and make this, especially the L2R2, yeah. an analog trigger on the RP3, forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. I really like the stack triggers and, and not many devices do it. Uh, other than that, I, I like the clicking, the new clickiness of the buttons. Yeah. Where they're just a touch softer, but it's, it's a little firmer, but it's not work. Uh, yeah. It's like, it's almost like a hybrid of Ann Burnick's mushiness mixed mm-hmm. with something very clicky. Something like maybe the Vita, which is more of a clicky feel. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with maybe that. Maybe maybe like a hybrid between those two is is what I'm thinking. Yeah. It's just easier. It's just less work to play the games. It feels like an Anbernick D pad, but maybe a tiny bit crisper. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I comparing directly to maybe the five five two. I would say the RP2 Plus's face buttons are easier to work with and have better tactile tactile response than the 552. Um, let's see, D-pad. D-pad is pretty similar. Might have to give half a point more to Retroid in this department, though, because it sits yeah. a little higher, and I feel like I'm more accurately hitting up, down, left, right. Yeah, I agree. However... One thing that Ambernic does win at is having clickable L3 R3. Because my God, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's we still should a thing. have we should have clickable L3 R3 in nearly every device this generation. I don't know why. Well, it it shouldn't be it shouldn't even be a thought. You know, it should just it be shouldn't there. be right. We've all got used to our switches. Sure, in the Vita days, we were used to not having clickable L3 R3, and then we were fine with that. You know, right. here we are with the uh, X18s. The X18s still has non-clickable sticks right uh also bummed about that i'm hoping for the rp3 we see those clickable sticks and i I think we will happily score a little higher there yeah so there's that now we've already talked to the screen about the screen quite a bit so we can kind of skip over talking about that too much uh but the os experience so that stock os is way better than booting up an rp2 with android 6 oh God, yeah. That, it's well, I love, day. I love the setup wizard. So the setup wizard pops on, mm-hmm. and it asks you a couple of questions. It walks you through. Hey, connect me to Wi-Fi. Great. Hey, uh, what time zone are you in? Uh, do you want Google Play enabled? Yes, no, and you can turn it off at any point because Google Play adds on overhead, RAM overhead, as right. well as CPU overhead. 
Uh, and you can also disable Google Play later on as well if you need it to install you can. games. Keep that in mind. You can go you into can. the you settings can... menu and disable it from there. It's hot swappable to turn it on or off whenever you want. So right. uh, I usually have play off. I just, I've found and relied on APKs more often than not to get yeah. that extra bonus bump. And I've, I'm getting some better performance in GameCube than a lot of pe- other people in similar, uh, who have the same handheld. I'm like, like, how are you getting Animal Crossing to run at this level? I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure. Check your SD card, you know, make sure you have a, a high quality, fast SD card. I'm using like SanDisk Extreme. Uh, make sure that Google Play is turned off so you have all of your RAM freed up for Dolphin. Uh, make sure that you are running at the lowest resolution you're comfortable with. Yeah. And also, but clear your, out. Your suggestion like, is 0.5, right? Half resolution for most things? The average I'm finding is 0.5, half of, of default resolution for GameCube games. That more yeah. often than not is hitting all points for me turning on all the, every speed hack dolphin has available some instances even turning off the cpu limiter and just letting it run unstable full frame can yeah. help but these games are playable so i mean that's something to consider with android even on android 9 lineage os we may or may not pump more performance out of it i don't know yet uh but as far as things are now in the stock experience it's pretty good. Um, the yeah, launcher, the launcher that comes with it is sort of, I would compare it to where Launchbox started with their Android front end uh, a year ago. Not all systems are implemented yet. Uh, scraping is automatic in a sense. I'm pretty sure that there's just some thumbnails stored in, inside the internal storage that are compressed because mm-hmm. it scrapes in about 10 seconds, but it only captures a small fraction of my library anyways snes scraping isn't there yet nothing seems to work for that nes does scrape uh gamecube doesn't scrape mame doesn't scrape so we've been putting in bug reports to retroid day and night i would say the last five days i've gotten very little sleep (laughs) and i am (laughs) completely just uh ready for sleep tonight but just constant well, bug the, reports the, and saying, hey, this the point is, is that they're going to keep updating it. Yes, absolutely. They're going to keep fixing and it. And they're good about that. The more that we we get it updated right now, the better the RP3 is going to be as well, because it'll be used it's in true. software. And what we're seeing is we're, we're submitting these bug reports. Uh, we're getting OTA updates out next day in most cases. So we've gotten yeah. two full updates this week and alone. So They've changed how their OTAs work from the RP2 to the RP2 Plus. Right. It was before with the RP2 that you basically had to download the entire operating system all at once. Right. And now. And, and then it would update. It was, and if anything went wrong, if any file got corrupted, blah, 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 you yep. had to start over essentially. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now they are sending out. It's called an MD5. It's a checksum. It, it, it's a file verification system. They're verifying yep. that the file that you download for the update is the correct file with this checksum. And then it's only it's only w- the software that they're changing. So instead of being the entire system, they're just updating yep. small parts. So they're updating apps. They're updating maybe some configuration files here and there to make things better. Small. So Yeah, and the updates, the updates take about... Yeah, Three minutes, five minutes, three, maybe five minutes. If you're on yeah. a slower connection, maybe five minutes. Yeah. Most of them have been going for me about one to two minutes. Mm-hmm. And the first update off the bat fixed a major issue because MMJR2 wasn't quite ready yet. Right. And so that released the special version of MMJR2 that allowed you to under res. So you're, yeah. every other version of Dolphin has starting point being at 1x resolution. This lets you down res to a point nine all the way down to a point three point three looks like garbage point nine <laughs> looks really sharp uh i would say point five to point six is your sweet spot but that's one thing that first update fixed it also fixed an issue with um gosh what did it fix i will say too yeah. that the the launcher itself is 
including its own retro art cores. All right. Yep. So the launcher itself, when you go to launch a game, because you're able to scrape and do all that stuff and set it all up, it's using cores that are tuned for this device from Retroid. Yep, it's true. And and that's just that, that's just kind of how it goes. Um, the other thing it fixed was there was an issue where the top line of pixels on the device wasn't showing up, and that's only yeah. because. Uh, that was a silly, that was a silly issue and it's fixed now. So OTA one fixed that OTA two came out today. I don't know what that fixed. We're trying to get a change log. Uh, so we will release that on our H as soon as we know. Yeah. I suggested directly to the Retroid team that when they release these updates, that they put up a change log in their server directly. Yep. So, yep. We want to know and we want to find out. So moving into emulation performance, we already talked GameCube quite a bit. So GameCube is working, but use the definitely use that community spreadsheet we have up to make sure that you're using the best settings. If you find settings that work better, if you can get better performance, please right. notate that in the spreadsheet. We want everyone to benefit from the best, most playable experience across these systems. Uh, right. Believe it or not, Wii works in a sense. The best I got was Super Mario Galaxy 2, getting to 87% playability. Uh, Eternal you know, Darkness, though. <laughs> It sounds so silly to hear Super Mario Galaxy 2 running on the 2+. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but, but in reality, I mean, that's crazy that it even got to 87%. I wouldn't expect we to, we or GameCube to be running past 60% on any of these games. You know? I know. It's it's nuts. I can't believe I'm saying this. I got some games on Wii to run at 100% 60 FPS. Consistent. That's nice. That's nuts. Get this, man. Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem for GameCube, uh -huh. or for. Uh -huh. So this, but so you're saying 100, percent but this is you messing with the resolution, down resing just a little bit, right? Yeah. And then, but yeah. it, but it's running at 100 percent at 60 frames, is what you're saying. Yes. And before I say anything else out of my mouth. Let me make sure that this game actually <laughs> is. I know I'm gonna have to do some editing on this on this cast. All right. <laughs> uh, to make it our usual standard. But Eternal Darkness is for GameCube. My bad, not for Wii. So I need to move that over. Uh, but Eternal okay. Darkness for GameCube is running at 100% 60 FPS at a 0.6 resolution, some speed hacks, uh, mm -hmm. and 0.9 works in most of that game. I was amazed. I've never played the game before, but it's like a Resident Evil, a Silent Hill sort of situation. And I'm like, oh, this looks good. How are we doing this? But some games, some Wii games do work. Dude, Coro Q, Penny Racers, 0.6 resolution, all speed hacks on, 100% playability on Wii. That is freaking nuts. It's a game no yeah, one's heard crazy. of and no one, no one except Rapid's going to play. Except for Rapid, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but. He's going to lose his problem, mind over that. I know. <laughs> the problem is, though, is that with Wii, the, the new bottleneck is how do you configure the Wiimote? with these controls. You're missing L3, right. R3, which have been crucial for me in emulating Wii in the past to having the, just a couple extra buttons. So the best workaround I can come up with is using the screen mapping software to get you get yourself some extra mm. custom options. Make sure you have the touch screen controls on, map it to the screen mapping software. That way you're getting that Wiimote swing, the Wiimote IR, and uh, that gets you to a pretty good state. So. That's the I, best solution I like I the have. way you're thinking here, and I'm really glad they included that screen mapping software. That's yep. cool. Yep. I would and have thought only to use that in Android apps, not using that screen mapping for emulating the Wiimote. I never would have come up with that. Well, I ran, cool. into, I ran into a problem where I'm trying to play Smash Bros. No, Smash Bros. didn't work. Sorry, Mario Kart. And it's asking you to point the Wiimote at a certain part of the screen. I'm like, I, I can't. I, even yeah. using you can't even it won't let you map the right thumbstick to the Wiimotes up down left right so i don't know why it's not Ooh. picking up the input so i'm like all right and i thought about it for a minute and i'm like oh screen mapping and then you can get some extra controls because you can put all that stuff on the screen did you and, run into uh, any other emulators that had uh, had any issues with the right stick no no. Nope, well, except for N64, 
and 64 oid, but we already knew that was an issue on the RP2. Right. It's the same thing here. Uh, right stick, though, shows up fine in the controller testing software, the gamepad tester. And it works uh, as analog, no problems. It works as analog, no problems. Double tested it, you know, move that stick around. It's showing up correctly. One thing to note, though, is when you first boot up your RP2 Plus, make sure to go into the, the analog joystick um, configuration. So make sure you define your uh, your, your joysticks. It, it bugs you about that, but just don't forget to do it. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> so N64, every game works flawlessly. GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, very little tinkering you need to do in Muppin. Make sure you're using uh-huh. Muppin Standalone. They work brilliantly. 3DS even works a little bit. I got Kirby working in a partially playable <laughs> state. We got Mortex, sir, who's been testing 3DS today, and he's going to put some settings in there. That's uh, awesome. He says he claims that some of the games are actually partly playable. Uh, so it's a very minute selection of 3DS. I don't know how this is possible, but uh, here we are. <laughs> Freaking Aether SX2 is running on the RP2 Plus on the little 4 3 inch screen. I don't know how it's working again. That blows my road mind. Road trip it, and Coro it runs Q. At all. It runs everything. Freaking Coro Q runs at 100% speed, 60 FPS. I don't know why. <laughs> Mini <laughs> games don't work at all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mini games don't work. SSX Tricky doesn't work. Uh, we don't expect PS2 to be playable on this device, but yet some games are. I hear that 2D games like Marvel vs. Capcom is playable. I need to test that and add it to the spreadsheet. Time will what, uh, do you know what version you tested on the RP2 Plus of the yeah? So it's the latest version, uh, the Alpha 720. I, I think so. I grabbed it, I think, off their GitHub. I want to say I might have grabbed it off like APK Pure or something. Okay, yeah, let's even, yeah, what's the latest one that they're on? Do, 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 do. Oh, God. But anyway, the point is, is that Aether SX2, for, for yep. those of you not in the know, Aether SX2 is actively being developed, and it's in a pretty early state right now. So the fact yeah. that any game is running at 100% on the fucking Retroid Pocket 2 Plus for PS2 Why? emulation Dude, blows we- my mind. <laughs> and especially to- a yeah. game that is one of our admin's favorite series, all right? Yeah. We're going to bust his chops about this for weeks. It's going to be great. Yeah, Coro Q, that series, I can tell you, whoever made those games, the entire range from the start of that series till like the later, higher ends, the efficiency, the optimization of the code, flawless victory. I'm like, yeah. I just know I can put a Coro Q game on this thing and it's going gonna, it's gonna <laughs> to play it. Like this is the Coro Q machine is what right. this thing is. Rapid, if you don't already own, if you're listening to this, if you don't already own an RP2 Plus, man, get on it. You, you got it. You got to do it. Um, so PSP, no problem. Almost every game I've thrown at it is 100% without any tinkering. Uh, you can even do 2X on a lot really? of games. On most of the games, of course, we all know our troubled children. Uh, God of War. Chains yeah. of Olympus is a little bit funky. You got to do some tr- you gotta do some hacks so you gotta turn it on non-buffered mode uh frame skip set to one yeah did you test ratchet and clank not yet i tested daxter one. daxter okay uh daxter that was worked totally fine? playable no problem 2x really no no texture issues or any of that crap no. wow no. wow no it's i uh, man every time i try to emulate that game it's always like his eyes are missing or something awful like no that. No, just use use the recommended settings for the game, which there are so many sites that give you some really good PPSSPP uh, configuration. PPSSPP, 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 PPSSPP. And I'm not including those many of those settings in the spreadsheet because they're just so well documented. If you want to know how to play Daxter without visual glitches, that's documented. How to make it run on the RP2 Plus at its best, that's what we're putting in here. Non-buffered, frame skip set to one, running at 1x resolution is how we can get Chains of Olympus to run. That one does have um, some minimal visual issues, but these settings get it to 100% speed, 60 FPS. No bullshit. 
So that's, that's the crazy. first I've ever seen that without doing well, like a modern Snapdragon. And beyond that, that's that's that game that people like when people bring up N64, but can it run Goldeneye? Yeah. That's the game that right, it can't we have Goldeneye. to bring we have to bring up because it's the golden standard for fucking ridiculous to implement for emulation. So we don't need to list settings for N64 anymore. They just <sighs> that's awesome. That's so it that makes me so happy to hear. And for the and for the most part, not PSP either. Um, Ghost of Sparta. That plays mm-hmm. even better than Chains of Olympus. So that yeah, one, I bet I, you, you can actually, if you put it in non-buffered mode, you can actually do it at 2x resolution at full speed with no frame skip. No bullshit. Not bad. So that was really fun. I was like, oh my, I'm so spoiled. How is this possible? <laughs> well, uh, and you were telling me too, we talked about it briefly, yeah. but uh, apparently this thing crushes Saturn as well, right? Saturn's... Saturn's an afterthought. I just, you know, I I played a few Saturn games. I played tried Panzer Dragoon and uh 60 FPS without tweaking a damn thing. That's However, crazy. you're not as soon as you try to up res, if you go to 2x, it starts to slow yeah. down. You're dropping frames. Yeah. But if you are okay running in 1x, which looks great on the screen and the screen resolution, yeah. Yabo Sanchiro 2, the built-in standalone. No frame skip needed, no mucking around. Uh, Nights into Dreams is one hundred percent playable. Daytona, Guardian Heroes, Sega Rally Championship, Shining Force, all that. It's nostalgia, orgasm, man. It's <laughs> it's fucking beautiful. <laughs> uh, Dreamcast is an afterthought. You don't have to worry about Dreamcast. NTSC, PAL ROMs, all of it works. So you don't. You don't have to mess with the NTSC versus PAL stuff with Dreamcast anymore, is what you're saying. Yeah. Not with yeah. Dreamcast, Good. not with Saturn, not with N64. That's cool. Uh, not with PSP. I tried PAL and NTSC versions of God of War, and they seemed pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. However, GameCube, PS2, Wii, 3DS, all of those systems, if you have PAL ROMs, you, you're going to find a benefit there. You're going to gain about 5% of performance increase. You're mm-hmm. going to gain about two to three frames uh performance boost there i mean i i'm not going to knock two or three frames that's that could take something from unplayable to playable to playable potentially uh wind waker wind waker i would say is a much better experience with the pal version uh same oh you tested that right oh i played wind waker man i played them all (laughs) this week i've not really delved into gamecube emulation much because it hasn't been fun now it's also not fun, but it's like it's on the horizon, it's close. and yeah. the tinkering doesn't take much to get most games to some sort of playable state, except for Mario games, which are famously inefficient with how the code is yeah. broken up. Uh, but so much of it is playable. Freaking Twilight Princess! Before you and I were talking tonight, Twilight Princess uh, got it to a hundred percent speed at a point five resolution. All the speed hacks, OpenGL. And I'm like, how was, how? Wait, on the Unisoc, we, you and I haven't talked about this. You're telling me no. that I can play, I can play Twilight Princess on my RP2 Plus. Yes, yes. At it was, it did drop to 98 percent speed when you get in busy but areas. But it, I want to, I I know, but yeah, I'll I'll. Sh- I believe you. I no, no I believe you. you. No, I I, I can you. see your eyes right now. Let's let's just launch. That's just that's right, one of my go. favorites. It's it's so good. I'm sure I have a save state. Yeah, load her up. Let that let that CPU governor kick up. Let's let's take a look. Okay, I don't have a save state for this one, but that's fine. Why don't you look at that? Uh, that right there. All right, man. I can't I can't knock that. I mean, damn. I understand missing out on Mario yeah. games, but <laughs> Twilight Princess <laughs> did not expect that. Wind Waker, I was like, okay, that's pretty good. There's no way Twilight Princess, because someone marked in the spreadsheet it was only playing at 75% speed. I was like, challenge accepted. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> you know, I'm learning a lot of the uh, best settings to get this thing going. Yeah. All right, now we're in an area where we can run around. All right, so as the governor kicks up, it's boosting from 90% to 
speed to now a hundred. All right, run run around, move that little run around. Little stick. Yeah. Okay. Is that is that sharp? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But still, that's that's so smooth. That's crazy. I think smooth. I have it. I think I have it up res too. Let me see if I can get it down to. Is that the five. is that the PAL ROM or is that the the NTSC? Uh, this is NTSC, by the way. So if we threw the PAL ROM on there, it'd be even better. Correct. I just don't have it right now because my internet bandwidth is running low this month. But check out that FPS meter. Looking good. That's way better than I expected. Jeez, oh Pete, man. I thought it's hundred percent playable. Hundred yeah. percent playable. I legit thought that everything was going to be at like sixty percent speed for GameCube and Wii maximum. But that's amazing. I don't even think there's much. I don't even think there's much audio lag. If anything, I can't hear. So, but I can see it, and that's that's very that's nice. Yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. Needless to say, there's a reason why I've stayed up for nearly five nights straight <laughs> with a new, taking care of a newborn, helping out and doing all my husbandly things, fatherly things, but also finding the time to s- completely deep dive into this handheld. <laughs> well, uh, not just emulation, review. though, but you also tested out streaming, right? That's what you're talking about. I did. You tried out Game, Game Pass. Pass and did I you try playing Stadia? Forza. I haven't tried Stadia yet. Okay. I need to, but I was playing uh, Forza Five. It was streaming on the RP2 without, Plus. On the RP2 Plus, there was no performance issues. Of course, with that four three screen, Game Pass gets confused, and so it kind of gives you these black bars. Mm-hmm. So you got to deal with that, but that's fine. But I'm like, and that again, may be something man. that that buffer right because it goes to the top left mm-hmm. is what you were saying. It does, uh, yeah. So that may be something that Retroid could fix with their uh, mm-hmm. their visual buffer for that app. It's, it's yes. to center that video signal because that that streams in sixteen by nine, right? Correct. Yeah. So you would have a, a bar on the top and the bottom. Yeah. So it's just I want to maximize the screen real estate for for Game Pass, and mm-hmm. I'll try Stadia and report back on there. Okay. But again, Saturn. Oh, Trying so Steam streaming? Yes. Yeah. Steam works just like it did on the RP2, except for way faster with except less. Better. <laughs> yeah. It is better in every freaking way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you got that screen mapping software. So you can you can map now some of those previously uh wonky things where you needed extra buttons. Yeah. So which is great. Android games, uh GTA San Andreas, perfect. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Just got to configure some of those touch controls, and yeah. it works awesome. Morrowind, flawless. Shovel Morrowind Knight. was flawless. You didn't have any problems with Morrowind at all. The open Morrowind, the open microwave Morrowind. Uh, no <laughs> issues. <laughs> no issues there. Fox has more info on that though. He Flatfoot yeah. Fox. He's testing it out for the RP2 Plus and for the 552, so mm-hmm. he'll have extra extra feedback. Um, Shovel Knight. Add some black bars, but it's 60 FPS, no issues. Yeah, um, the best game I have played on this is Stardew Valley for Android games. Stardew Valley, adding the touch controls, which we didn't have in the RP2, because it worked right. on there too. It's just right. not having touch was a pain in the ass. But having well, those it, touch controls... It worked after we fixed the ROM for it. <laughs> right, it after we fixed the stock. ROM. Yeah. But having it now in 4.3 with touch... Uh, flawless. Like I'm like, oh, this game's fun now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna <laughs> oh, go make a now. farm. I'm gonna go find a it's wife. I'm gonna go. Yeah, it was complete shit. Um, someone asked me to try out Super Mario 64 APK. I just got that working today, so I still need to try it out a bit more. Okay. Did uh, you try out Ocean Horn? That's one of my go tos. Not yet. I not don't yet. foresee. I do not foresee it, an issue. Ocean Horn ran on the RP2. Uh, there wasn't really yeah. any slowdown per se, but it wasn't smooth. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I it was, we're gonna it was see... plenty fast, but it didn't feel smooth. Yeah, I think we're just going to see a big boost here. Yeah. Some Someone else requested Wild Rift. I haven't tried that. If there's any games that you would like to see tested, 
please add them to, sp- to the spreadsheet and either myself or someone else contributing from the community will get to the Check game when we can. Yeah. So this is just, again, it's just very, very exciting. I don't want to overhype. I don't want to sell it short either, but we're in a new dimension of retro gaming as yeah. of this device. And we've We went through a drought of devices for the last like yeah. seven months to be yeah. real because we keep kept getting 3326 devices right yeah and we didn't really get anything major until the 552 came out just a couple yeah. weeks ago right uh so we, we've been in a pretty big drought for probably seven or eight months on devices being actually usable and fun and advancing the technology right i'm just so, so over it's, it's good to see something finally come out that has an immeasurable performance increase without a brutal price increase yes exactly and i'm i'm just so over some of these slower handhelds that don't emulate some of these higher systems i'm like yeah. i don't want to be messing with ps1 settings anymore or yeah. n64 i'm over it yeah. i i'm okay messing with gamecube right now because we're entering that gen but uh it's just but nice in another year or a year and a half, we probably won't even have to be messing with that. Yeah, it's true. And I want to know especially because we're people, we're Android boys. We really are. I as time goes on, I'm just like, whatever it is, give it to me on Android and I'll use it. It's fine. So HDMI, we don't know yet. I've been asked that a number of times. You know, how's the HDMI on this thing? And I just have mm-hmm. not had the time quite yet to test that feature. Have I you? will say, and this was, no, I have not, but I will say this. Uh, Retroid changed the way they did the video signal. It was something I Through specifically asked, asked David. Yeah. yeah. In the Retroid Pocket 2, the video signal went through an FPGA chip that converted the signal. And yeah. that signal then went from the FPGA to both the screen and the HDMI. The reason why that's important is because that mm-hmm. means that uh, that signal could never change resolutions ever yeah now we have the potential here this could output a 1080 potentially i'm not going to promise that obviously but it might but we have the potential for it to do that because now it's going through an Uh fpga chip and then going to the hdmi the video signal goes straight to the screen so there's no more so we may be able to mod the fpga to output a 1080 1080. we can up res some ps1 we can probably up res some psp in certain instances and I have already accessed the FPGA port on the motherboard for people oh, who are curious. Really? Yes. Oh, dang. Watch yeah. out, everybody. <laughs> Thor's FPGA Inc. <laughs> FPGA Tour is what he's doing. Uh, so it's just a summary, man. And I know, and I know, and listeners will probably pick up on this. This is a little bit different format from our regular back and forth free for all yeah. shenanigans. We're trying we to attempting. we're trying to expand. We're spreading yeah. our wings, you know. Yeah, this is our first like venture into like a I don't know professional sounding uh, review, which it's a little bit weird putting on this style, this format. So I think it's something we'll kind of work towards as we keep going here. But it's yeah. also good to do these deep dives and just like let's analyze these devices from every single angle, because right. I'm sure someone out there wants to know super niche things about these things, and we have them here. Might as well. Well, dude, try them how many times a device comes out and someone says, "Oh, it yeah. can," it it may be able to do GameCube, and someone's in- instantly, instantly pulls out some obscure game that nobody else remembers, right? Kor- Koroku or Ikaruga or whatever, <laughs> you know, yeah. and everyone's yeah. like. Yeah, but does it run that game? You know, everybody piles on. So it's <laughs> it's good to be able to talk this stuff out and have a, a passionate community that tests this shit out so other people can know if it's worth buying. Yeah, ex- that's that's and that's the whole thing. Like also Retroid needs to release kernel source to me. <laughs> so what's going on with that? So, so we need kernel source for why? So we can make a custom ROM. That's essentially yes. it. And we don't I'm not going to say we need it, need it, right? Because yeah. this device is actually pre-troubled, and which will allow us to essentially load up random systems and things like that yeah. on it already. But if we want to have performance increases, uh, 
then we need to be able to change the clock speed on the CPU and all that kind of stuff. We, we need the kernel source to be able to, uh, to upgrade it. Now, you yeah. brought up earlier, this thing doesn't have a fan in it, right? Correct. Correct. So us being able to, we're not you know, going to do a 50% overclock. But right. like we were talking about, two or three frames per second can be the difference between unplayable and playable. If, yes. we, can, if we can bump this up by 5 or 8%, and get it more in the playable range for GameCube and stuff like that without generating a ton more heat. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. going to take the battery life down, but it's also going to mean that uh, Wind Waker is going to be playable at 0.7 resolution instead of 0.5. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So we're, we're going to get a little more juice out of it. I understand how this works, and they're worried about competitors and all that kind of stuff. But I don't think they need to be at the hundred dollar price point. No, it's, nobody, nobody's going to be able to match them at this point. Like, dude, with this, let's do a comparison for a second. All right, for the five okay. five two, two hundred some station. dollars. Yeah, space station is what size. We say. Yeah, it has a fan. Yeah, it's chunky. It's I haven't had time to mess with performance too much. I'm thinking it's around comparable to the Unisoc, maybe a little improved in some and weaker in others, but. I wouldn't what say you, improved personally. Okay. All right. Well, over $200. Yeah. 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi in the 552. Right. No Bluetooth. $100. Plays right. up to, you know, freaking some PS2. Like, what the hell? What the hell? Uh, it makes no sense. It's a really well, good value for the money. Here's, here's a good way to frame it, all right? The 552 yeah. has that baller-ass screen. All right. It's amazing. That correct. screen is phenomenal. Oh, correct. All right? As far Holy as shit. color and saturation, like you do want to, yeah. how do you feel now? You've had more time with the five, five, two than me. How does that compare? Oh, I to love the it. Two plus? I love, well, I love the, the five, five, two screen specifically. I don't yes. like the battery life. Uh, yes. I don't like the drama surrounding it. All right. I think that's weird. Oh yeah. It's uh, and yeah. creepy. It's to creepy. To be honest. Yeah. I, you got to use the charger that comes with it. I noticed that none right. of my, None of my standard yeah. chargers work. Slow charger, for sure. But it, it claims fast charging because they put a dual battery situation in it. But the battery drains way too fast, for my opinion, for yeah. my taste. I and, like yeah. the 552 because I like the screen. The build quality is yeah. decent. I don't like the shoulder buttons. Yep. I'm not knocking on the Ambernick hard right now or anything. I still love the device. At the same time, I'm yeah. just like, you can, do better than, you can do better than this. Shoulder is a little too clicky. RP2, well, that's because they have nicer. the classic. They have the classic uh, click buttons in the shoulders. The click buttons, all right. They do just like the rest uh, of the RG three series. It's I. I appreciate what Amernick's trying to do. They need to. They need to do better. They need to in, improve the state of the art. You know what I mean? They do. It's time so, they were state of the art. Analog triggers. Now it's time for them to step up. Make make the device smaller. You know, but keep yep. that. So anyway, that's going into the 552. The, these are two very different devices. And the fact that you can buy two Retroid Pocket 2 Pluses for, yeah, but for the same or less than a 552 is it's crazy. That's, yeah, that's crazy. But uh, what else do we compare this to? What else can we compare with the RP2 Plus right now? Like, what's a comparison we can make? The X18S? Nothing, that, but see, nothing that's released, I don't think. What other it's four own, three device can we compare? Nothing. I mean, the Retroid Pocket Two is kind of the only real. Yeah, the RP Two or the uh, the RG three fifty one MP. Right, right, because that has the same. That's screen. not fair. But, that's not a fair comparison. Yeah, the processors, the the SOCs are in two completely different classes. Yeah, so that's that's not a fair so, comparison at all. There isn't really a comparison. Yet, for something yet, with but, this but yet the MiU the the MiU P sixty will mm -hmm. be a device to compare when the Mio right. P60 comes out. We are going to compare on this podcast. Right. We're going to compare these two and have them go head to head. Well, and I thought for the longest time that the retro pocket two plus and the RP three, were going to have the Helio P60 or P65 in them. Right. So we'll so, see what that vision might've looked like with the P60. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Uh, the P the P60 is going to have the wider screen. And yeah. uh, it's going to come in that nasty DMG color that I am just so excited oh, for. Yeah. I want it so yes. bad. Which if uh, you want to see, again, the Miu Mini has the same shell, the yeah. same shell color. Look at that yeah. dirty, look at that dirty boy. So nasty, right there. I love it. Look at these, 
Look at these funny freaking L1 R2 buttons. They're there. So but. I think as far as comparing the RP2 Plus to anything, dude, it, I think it's kind of an impossible task right now for us to, right. to have a true comparison. There's nothing that's at the price all point, we can, all that we performance, can, with that screen size and shape. Right. And we're basically comparing it to the 5.5.2 because the 5.5.2 dropped around the same time now. We're getting right. it into our hands around the same right. time frame. So it's another device we're excited to play with. Um, I will say the Ambernic 5.5.2, if you're a Game Boy Advance nerd like I am, has yeah. the craziest looking in a positive way screen for GBA that I've ever touched. All right. Yeah. It is outrageously good looking. And even Russ agrees with me. I mean, it is it is disturbing. It is how good Game Boy Advance looks on that fucking screen. It it's is amazing. so good, dude. I'm gonna play the other uh, Castlevania games for GBA, and I'm probably yeah, gonna try it out on the five five two. You should. Um, it's amazing for that. But so the RP two plus though, in summary, for me, my likes and dislikes. Mm-hmm. I like just. That that first unboxing experience, having so long with the RP2 and putting up with sort of its deficits, yeah. the immediate feeling, not only the touchscreen, but the immediate feeling of the D-pad, the face buttons, um, the weight, the ergonomics of it, all of it feels right to me. It's the device that I've been walking around the house carrying my newborn in one arm, <laughs> able, yeah. to, able to one hand the RP2 in the other. The touchscreen helps immensely with that, by the way. Yeah. Quickly accessing stuff, playing RPGs, um, playing a little bit simpler games that I can do in one hand. Like, that's a possibility here. Uh, dislikes, though, uh, there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, as far as the OS goes, as far as the launcher goes, there is so many features lacking, man. Again, I'm just right now doing reset yeah. collection as my front end. And then setting it to launch on boot and going into RetroArch and the standalones, depending on what it gives the best performance. Everything up through uh, Saturn, basically, you can yeah. use RetroArch for. That's where you need to start using those standalones. They're going to keep improving uh, the launcher with our, our community feedback. Well, let's talk I, about the launcher just really quick. I like, will what, say, though, yeah, that the launcher does need love. I know it's it's it a continuing process. Well, right now it doesn't have Genesis. Right, right now it doesn't have some of these basic systems that people want to emulate. And they're like, where is yep. it? Well, I think they're adding it. It doesn't have any sort of <laughs> randomizer, of course. That's a long shot. But <laughs> scraping <laughs> is still... Randomized. I know. Scraping is still an issue. Uh, there is a funny function in it, though. If you go click on the clock in the bottom right, it clears out your RAM, which is helpful before launching GameCube because right. clear out your RAM, have the max RAM available, clear out your processes. However, at mo at today, moment today, you can't launch MMJR2 from the launcher. They have it set to launch to standard Dolphin, and you can't customize anything hmm. yet. Well, there's there's there is <laughs> room to grow. How about that? There is room to grow. So I'm not I do gonna, I'm on I do I'm appreciate that they're they're making the launcher though. All right. Um, I do too. It and is that they didn't do something silly OS. like, yeah, Retroid OS, also known as Pandora. All right. There's no ROMs uh, that ship with this either. No, no, you got to add your own ROMs, which again, I appreciate. So we don't yeah. have to have that discussion in RH 5,000 fucking times. Right. Um, <laughs> I would say for my likes and dislikes, I really like that they increase the height of the D pad and the face buttons. Yes. That feels very nice. And the new membranes are extremely nice. Uh, I like I like the processor upgrade and, and the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth upgrade as well. I'm yeah. disappointed, though. Oh, and the screen, obviously. I'm disappointed, yeah. though, that they didn't find a way to put in uh, L3 and R3 on the, the sticks. I'm disappointed That's my other that, disappointment, too. Yeah. that the right stick is still a slider. Right. I I'm okay with that. I'm okay I know, with but the I slider. Think that they I kind of like the slider. Out. I like the slider. But I think they could I'm have figured out a way to, like to a, give it to give it a click. You know? Yeah. To give it a click. And at the very least, I'm in RP2, we had L3 R3 mappable to volume up, volume down. So right. we've requested, please give us a software update that gives us L3 R3 to right. volume up and down as a as a workaround. Uh 
beyond that though, I just, I like, I like it. It's almost mm-hmm. there for me. It's almost perfect for me. Uh, I think RP, what, what this device is telling me today is that the RP3 very well might be the one. And having watched the Matrix, every Matrix movie ever in the last mm-hmm. 48 hours, the new one was, was, it was good. It's but fan service. The, R- Let's be honest. the RP3 might be the device. I might sell the whole freaking collection if that thing knocks <laughs> yeah, it right. out of the park, man. I know, I know. But it well, might we'll- be the exit point. We'll see how we'll see how efficiency goes up on it as things continue to get an update, uh, and we'll see what happens with the RP three as well because I think they're yeah. planning on doing the widescreen. If yep. we can get if we can get to a point with the the efficiency on these things yep. where we can have like the RP two plus be the four by three format, all right? Yep. And then have the RP3 for, for like PSP and even GBA and stuff like that. It'll look even better over there on mm-hmm. that wider screen. Then I'm good with that. What I'm concerned about is there not being a lot of competition in this like 90 to $140 market. I wonder when they're going to realize they can raise the price by 20 to $30 and still and sell. Still pay although, yeah. although don't and right please don't this because this is an awesome price and i think this is the price is why it's going to do so well i think it's going to do amazing uh if we want to rate it i don't know out of 10 i'd say this is a solid 8.5 out of 10 for me i'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 okay fair because because of the missing the click is really important it's really really important it is if you're going to put is. some put a five gigahertz chip in something where it can stream, the click is extremely important. Well, uh, and we need to take our feedback here and provide it to Retroid so they hear this stuff. So they hear we're right. in the Retroid Discord. We're providing our feedback. Everyone is providing feedback, which is great. Their QA people though are now out in our Discord in RH, and they're right. on our the R Retroid uh, subreddit asking for feedback. How 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 can we make this product better for you all. How right. can we make Retroid Pocket 3 the device that you want? So hop on our Retroid. It's pinned to the top. Uh, leave your feedback. What do you want to see in this device? What do you want to see in the next device? Um, what do you want to see? What, what's working for you? What's not? Uh, leave it in our RP2 Plus channel on our Discord. Um, yep. and, let, and let us know. Like, Or in the RP3 channel just, as well. That's available to anybody. Yeah. If you have ideas for your RP3, load it up. Go for it. Yeah. And we're not out here to forever do this song and dance of, well, when's the next handheld going to be able to do this or that? Ultimately, what I think we're all in this for is to have one device and then exit the game. Right. Just one. The end game. And for for us so far, we're really looking at the RP3. And the RP2 Plus shows us that that world is possible. Right. Stubbs so is, is looking for like a like a GPD XD successor that can stably play GameCube and PS2. All right, it's, I think that's where you're at. Exactly. And I'm, oh, and, and while I'm we're at wishing, the, yes, give us a, give us a clamshell while we're wishing things. Yeah, go for it. Come on, Retroid clamshell. Let's R- go. RP RP two plus C, the clam <laughs> plus C, the clam, <laughs> the clam. Oh well. <laughs> Well, this was good, man. I, I had uh, I had yeah. fun talking about this thing. We're going to keep making it better. Yes, is what the goal is. We're going to keep trying to make it better. We are and having fun with it and seeing where we can we tweak are. performance and get a little bit more out of it. Like That's we talked important. about, small performance increases uh, will, can make a big difference in a lot it's of true. games. So. so, last question for you: Are you having fun with it? I am having fun. It's been a while since I had to like dig you know yeah for yeah this stuff and uh sitting here testing out twerp builds from turtle and uh and really not running into roadblocks but running into puzzles to figure out right it's kind of fun is though. is fun i really like that i think that we're going to get this figured out a lot more quickly than we got rp2 figured out because i was think pain. so too i think um, so too um, and we're going to get something going here where we can get some nice performance increases, or even if we don't get performance increases, 
add some nice yep. features that that people might not know about. Like Lineage has the ability uh -huh. for you to change your uh, your screen color temperature, right? You can do that here too. So you can. We'll just see. We'll see where where it goes yeah. and see if we can actually add performance increases or if we just add features and slim down the ROM a little bit, get some more user space. It it just depends. And I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Are you having fun? With your I, five day bender. Uh, I need some sleep. I need some dinner. <laughs> I'm like starving and exhausted. Uh, but I think that tells me something because when have I done this last with a device since the RP two? When have right. I like gone this hard? Right? What's making me go so hard? Uh, I'm excited to get this review out, but also just like I've been having a blast. I've been having fun. Uh, just playing games. I'm trying a lot of games I never have before because many of these higher end systems just haven't been an option. And I don't want to yeah. sit in my TV or sit in my computer and emulate because for some reason I really want to do it on a handheld. And so it just opens up imagination. I think what Retroid was intending was something to truly spark joy in you. Yeah. I can you can tell that from this product. Um I think quality assurance is something to work on you know my one little my one little other gripe again is that something as simple as the bottom of the sd card yeah is on some of the units a little bit loose so you got to go in there open up your unit and uh fix the clip so that your your sd card cover closes but things like this they're going to work out and just keep everyone keep providing them your feedback um you i know, have one we hear one build gripe and I'm What's sure plenty of people are going to agree with this. Uh, if you have to take it apart for whatever reason, the little clips break. They do. Have you broken one and yet that, on the new one? Yeah, I broke three. Yeah. And but, I'm I'm very, very careful. You know, I take the screws out. The, I, I have the spudging tools, all that kind of yeah. stuff. I'm very careful. And they, they still broke. I know. I've broken so. one and probably every unit I've taken apart. Yep. Um, and that's why I, or I ordered a third one. So I got, I got these two, the the pcb upgrade board and then i have a cheddar on the way <laughs> so we'll uh <laughs> which by the way we have i'm entering one of these as a giveaway unit for the holiday giveaway for the first Ooh. prize the first prize winner so you'll have to pick between a number of awesome high-end handhelds right and uh don't pick don't pick the rp2 plus because i i don't mind keeping an extra one so <laughs> it's fine with that we're going into the long wind category here, but um, again, I'm loving the device, the screen, the temperature, the color, the manual color coordination you can do on it compared to the RP2 is awesome. Now you can customize your cools, your warms. I'm just excited to see what else I can do. And I'm going to say today's video is an initial review. Our yeah. final thoughts We're gonna have keep yet it going. to be determined. We need to deep dive into this for another month or two before we can let you all know uh, how, what we're feeling. We need software yeah. improvements, uh, our custom community software. And that's how it goes, man. Uh, and thanks again we to all of our We can get to a situation where we're building a better operating system back in while they're building a better launcher. Yep. Then everybody, literally everybody wins. Every single person has something that they enjoy and that they have you know, something that something that feels right to them. Yeah. Uh, again, just pulling up here. Thank you to our patrons for you. You have helped RH become nearly self-sufficient and run it on its own steam. We have 24 block acorns, Axmas, Sebian, cognitive. Thank you. Crazy Dave, Damian, Wright, Dog, paw games, flat foot, Fox, Jill animal, have liquid divide, mega barracuda, Raven mage, retro game core, Setsuna Guerreros, uh, father, bill, Dollar bill, rather. <laughs> Axe Ren, Thor, Totally Terry, Trans Transients 8985, Brian Starmer, and Wonderful, who are, you are wonderful. <laughs> You're all wonderful. Thank you for helping us do what we do. Go to Patreon, pledge, uh, and you will get some raffle tickets for Game of the Month prizes, Game of the Year prizes, all sorts of Patreon benefits, and uh, help us do what we love. We, we're yeah. so excited to do this, and we'll see you guys next time. Catch you later.